In this video, I'm going to share 10 game changing GarageBand for iOS tips that you've definitely, probably, maybe never heard of before. GarageBand for iOS's touch instruments are fantastic. They allow you to recreate the expressive tone and personality of a number of instruments you might not otherwise have access to. Playing these sounds on GarageBand's instrument interfaces feels great, but what if you'd rather play these sounds on a more traditional keyboard layout? In GarageBand for iOS's instrument browser, you'll want to completely ignore the touch instrument whose sound you want to recreate. Instead, navigate to the keyboard touch instrument. Tap on the More icon in the bottom right of the keyboard icon to open this menu. From here, scroll down to Other, and in this next menu, you'll find all of GarageBand's available touch instruments. Only when you select one, it will open in keyboard format instead of that particular instrument's usual interface. This allows you to do some interesting things with these sounds that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. For example, I can add an arpeggiator to this violin sound. And I can access a much wider octave range with this guitar sound than is possible when playing it with GarageBand's fretboard. If you're playing a touch instrument and want to switch to a different one, you don't need to go back to the instrument browser every time and swipe around until you find the one you want. Instead, tap and hold on the instrument browser button, and this menu will appear, allowing you to jump directly to whatever instrument you want. Once you've recorded a touch instrument or some audio, having to switch over from the instrument or audio recorder view to tracks view in order to edit your regions can be fiddly, annoying and time consuming. Instead, you can just swipe down on the ruler to access any recorded regions on your track. From here, you can edit notes, split, cut, copy or paste your region exactly as you would in tracks view. Note that this isn't really an issue on larger iPad models as you have more screen real estate to work with. One of the most annoying things about recording things like vocals or guitars in GarageBand is that you can't record directly into the tracks view. Once you hit record, you're locked into the audio recorder or guitar amp instrument screens until you hit stop. Luckily, there is a workaround that forces GarageBand to record audio while on the track's view. To make this work, you'll need an audio interface with two or more inputs, like this one. First off, attach the audio interface to your iPad or iPhone. Select the track you want to record into, and then set its input to whatever input you're attached to on your audio interface. It's input one in this case. Then create another dummy audio track, this time setting its input to a different input on your audio interface, in this case input 2. Then arm both tracks to record by tapping the red icons in their track headers. Now when you hit record, you'll stay in tracks view. Regions will be created in both tracks now I can record in the tracks view and I don't have to worry about being stuck in the 
audio recorder, yeah. And once you're done, you can just delete your dummy track. GarageBand's drummer track has a built-in feature that can make these automatic rhythm sections feel a lot more dynamic. You can have the kick and snare portions of an acoustic or electronic drummer region follow the rhythmic groove of another track in your project. To do this, select a drummer region, swipe the follow switch down in the bottom right there to turn it on, then tap the follow track pop-up menu that appears under kick and snare, then choose a track from the list. Your drummer track will now follow the groove of your selected track. This works really well with bass tracks if you want a steady, rock solid beat. While coupling your drummer with a guitar track, for example, will result in a more dynamic rhythm. Well worth experimenting with and a great way to have your drummer track sound less stock and more like, well, an actual drummer. If you're as terrible at finger drumming as I am, you'll be relieved to hear that you can have any single drum in any of GarageBand's kits play a repeating pattern by holding two fingers down on it. If I hold two fingers down on this drum kit's kick drum, you'll hear the pattern begin. By doing things like changing the distance between fingers, you can adjust the speed of the repeats. This works in electronic kits too, and with any electronic drum sound. Really handy for a steady hi-hat pattern in particular, I found. Speaking of fingers, you can access alternative autoplay patterns by pressing and holding a different number of fingers on a touch instrument's chord strips. With this acoustic guitar autoplay pattern selected, here's what holding one finger on a chord strip sounds like. Now two. And now three. This works on every autoplay pattern, giving each touch instrument a total of 12 individual patterns. Most of GarageBand's touch instruments allow you to alter their sound using a part of the on-screen interface. In the notes view of this cello touch instrument, I can use this articulation button to play notes pizzicato by pressing and holding the top symbol. and play notes with Boeing by touching and holding 
the articulation button, then swiping a string up and down. You can lock these different articulation options by double tapping the button. The Air Who Touch instrument allows you to add a grace note by pressing and holding the grace note button. Play trills with the trill button. Use a horse effect with the horse button, unsurprisingly. And you can add vibrato to your notes by dragging the vibrato slider to the right. Now, I'm definitely no piano virtuoso, so I find this next tip really useful. You can add note labels to piano-based touch instruments. You'll actually need to come out of the GarageBand app itself for this one. Open your iPad or iPhone settings, then scroll down to the big old list of apps at the bottom. Locate GarageBand and select it. Next, scroll down until you see this option, Keyboard Note Labels. Toggle the switch on, and when you return to GarageBand, all of the piano-based touch instrument's keys will be clearly marked, so you know which notes are which. By default, GarageBand's effects track allows you to effectively remix your GarageBand project in real time, using, amongst other things, Filter and Repeater XY pads. Did you know that you can actually swap out these effects though? Tap on the effect name above either XY pad to select from four other effects. Effects, including wobble, reverb, Orbit and delay. There's 10 GarageBand tips and tricks that you definitely, probably, maybe didn't already know. Anyway, give that like button a wee tickle if you found this video useful, and if you want to find out how to bypass GarageBand's 32 track limit, watch this next. <laughs>